Hey everybody, how's it going? Icy Cat here, and we are continuing our profiles for Operation Chimera. This time we're taking a look at Lion. He brings some much needed intel to the attacking team, and we're gonna break down his weapons loadout, gadgets, and the ways to get the most out of how to use them. So this is a second video we're doing on the CBRN or Seaburn unit that is the new addition to Operation Chimera. We were talking about Finca in the previous video and now we're going to take a look at Lion. He uses an aerial drone called the EE-1D. This detects enemy movement, providing an overview of the entire battlefield. But before we get into that, let's begin by taking a closer look at his weapons loadout. Because his original base unit is GIGN, he shares the same weapons loadout with many of those operators but he does have one specific weapon just for him, and that is the V-308 or the Vector-308. When people hear the Vector, they immediately think about Mira. Her SMG is, of course, the Vector-45 ACP. This one is a little bit different. It's chambered in a 308 round, and it has a 50-round drum magazine. This is a slower rate of fire weapon, and its damage is going to be a little different as well. With a 50 round capacity, it's actually more like an LMG in the way that it handles overall, but it does have a little bit of an assault rifle feel to it. It doesn't feel like that same Mira SMG version of the Vector. This definitely feels distinctly different. Next up, he shares the 417 Marksman rifle along with Twitch. She also has access to this, and it hits like a truck with 69 damage. However, it does have a lower ammo capacity of the DMRs at only 10 rounds between reloads. Still, putting a foregrip along with a muzzle brake on this is going to give you a very accurate precision weapon. His third choice will be the SG CQB shotgun, and he shares this with the other GIGN operators. Twitch, as well as Doc and Rook, all have access to the same one. It does respectable damage at 53 with an ammo capacity of 7. It is pump action. It does have that slower rate of fire, but it's not as slow as some of the other ones. Handgun choices are also going to be the same as the rest of the GIGN operators, with the P9 here at 45 damage and an ammo capacity of 16, which is nice and generous or the choice of the LFP 586 revolver with a hefty 78 damage, but it also boasts a pretty good recoil to make up for that. It's gonna have a slower rate of fire and the real drawback to this weapon is gonna be the six round capacity. It's going to be a slower reload, so do be careful of that. Secondary gadgets are going to be a choice between either a stun grenade or a claymore. Really, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's going to depend on your play style as well as the map you find yourself playing. Now let's take a look at Lion's Gadget. This is the EE-1D drone that we were talking about before. This is an aerial drone, and what it does is it allows you to kind of have, well, basically everybody's calling them wall hacks. You can see any of the operators on the defensive team wherever they are in the map. This goes across the entire map. There's no safe zone from this. Now here's a shot of the aerial drone itself. It is just, it always hovers above about the center of the map there. It doesn't change position, so it's not like when Lion is moving around that the drone follows him and you can kind of make out where his position might be by seeing where the drone is. That doesn't matter. It doesn't move around at all. It just sort of hovers and drifts in the air. And no matter how much you shoot at it, uh, you just it's indestructible. You cannot take it out. There's no way to bring it down. There is also a cooldown timer on the ability, so you can't spam it back to back. You do have to wait 10 seconds in between uses, and if you actually look at the icon there, you can see it sort of refilling back to a state where you can trigger it again. The way it works is it uses some kind of like an echolocation type technology to pinpoint anybody that's moving, and if they're not moving, it doesn't pick them up, which isn't exactly how echolocation works, but that's more of a balancing thing. It gives the operators an entire red outline around their bodies, as well as giving the name of them and the icon for that operator so you can see their exact position. Again, there's no range limitation on this at all. Not only does Lion see this, but the entire attacking team gets the bonus of seeing this as well. It's very short. It only lasts for about three seconds, but it does also have a three second spin up time too. And both teams get that heads up. The attacking team gets that notification so they can get ready and start looking around for targets and see where they might be. But likewise, the defensive team gets that too. So they are warned that they are about to be tracked and that gives them three seconds to get into a position to get ready for it. Again, if they're not moving, it's not gonna track them. We can see that demonstrated here. As long as you hold still, even though that track is going on, you will not 
give your position away. But you don't have to necessarily stand exactly still. Really what it's talking about is as long as you're not moving your feet. You can do other kinds of movement though. You can change stance. So you can go from standing to crouch to prone and back again. None of those count as movement that will trigger the scanning device. You will still remain hidden while changing stances. Likewise, when you aim down sights, that is a form of movement that does not count against you. You can go in and out of ADS with no penalty to being detected. Leaning also does not count as movement against it, so you can lean left and right. Also, you can rotate in any direction. That's not going to matter either. It doesn't matter if you're doing it standing, crouched, or prone. Rotation does not trigger the detection. It's only when you're actually moving your feet. Then once you do that, you light up like a Christmas tree. Fortunately, as I said before, the duration is pretty short. Now, when we're talking about rotation, one other operator comes to mind, and that's Tachanka. He's actually moving his feet when he's mounted to the turret, even though he's pivoting around a central point his feet are moving. So does that mean that he'll show up on the scanning device when he rotates on the turret? And the answer is no, that does not count against him. Tachanka can pivot his turret freely and not show up on any detection. So we know if you're moving, you're revealed. And we know if you're standing still, you're not. But what if you start out being detected and then you stop moving? Does it go away? The answer to that is no, the detection penalty remains. So if you are moving and then you wind up stopping, you think that maybe that's gonna help you out. It doesn't, your detection is still there. So are there any hard counters to Lion's ability? We took a look at a few of them and the first one here we were gonna check out was Echo because he can actually cancel most animations when he impacts an operator that's mid animation sequence. We try that out here, it doesn't interrupt it. Once that is initiated, it will still go off. Another ability that will cancel some animations or at least prevent them from beginning in the first place is Legion's Goo Mines. So we check this out, stepping on the Goo Mine, nope, you can still freely activate the device that doesn't get in the way. And pretty much everything we thought to try just doesn't really have any effect. There's no way to stop this. There is one hard counter that you can use to deal with this though, and that's actually getting in the way of the transmission signal from his touchpad to that drone. And the way that's going to work is if you are in proximity to a mute jammer, you are not going to be able to send that signal. So you can see here, as we even get close to it, if you look at the icon for the device, it actually grays out when you get in the radius of the jammer. You can't engage it. If you try, you get the signal letting you know that it's jammed. And if you activate that device when you're too close to the wall, as you can see, I'm right on the other side of the wall from that jammer. The icon is grayed out. If I try to activate it, nothing happens. You may find yourself in that position. And if you do, that's just what's going on move out of the radius of the jammer and you'll still be able to use it as normal now the mute jammer itself also grants the ability to remain hidden from the scan of the drone so any of the defensive operators can sit within that radius that the mute jammer has it is kind of a small radius but within that area of effect you can move around freely and it doesn't trigger the scan response from the drone you can even stack a few of these in overlapping fields of coverage and have a wide area that you can move on and as you can see we do briefly cross into a gap in that overlapping coverage and it shows up but then as soon as we go into the next part of the overlapping field we lose it again so so as long as you've got a bunch of them in a row here, you can actually maintain a wider area of effect to move around in and still remain covered. And really, that's the only thing that's going to work are the mute jammers other than standing still. Now, there are some other operators that you might be wondering about if they wind up working as counters to this. One of them would be Kevera. So she has the silent step ability, which does fool Jackal's tracking device. He can't get a read on her footprints when she's gone through an area in silent step. She actually doesn't leave anything behind for him to scan. Does that work with the drone? The answer is no. She will still get her position revealed even while she's in the silent step ability. It doesn't matter if she engaged it before it started or after it's begun, it just doesn't do anything. Another operator that people might think would have a chance against being detected by the drone is Vigil. After all, he can turn himself invisible to the standard camera drones, and this is another type of drone. However, the technology is different. This isn't a visual ID. It works on a different kind of technology. And so even while his ability is active, he still is detected. So really when it boils down to it, all that you have for counters are going to be either standing still and waiting for that scan to clear or taking advantage of a mute jammer in some way and remaining hidden that way. There's not much else you can do to hide from this. But don't underestimate the ability to not move. It's actually a really interesting counter because it's universal. Any character can choose to do this. You don't have to have worried about if you took the right operator to have that counter. You can do this anywhere, anytime. Now, there are, of course, going to be situations where you have to move and you can't take the time to be still. Of course, there's going to be situations where that's going to play out. 
But if you have a well-coordinated team, you can actually see this play out really effectively. I'm just gonna have this clip going here in the background. And this shows our team when we were playing, they launched a bunch of these different scans against us. And for the most part, nobody on our team ever got spotted. There's one guy in the garage that was moving around, so he gets spotted and then shot. But the rest of us, everybody just freezes and we're essentially playing a game of red light, green light when that thing goes off. We stop moving, our positions are not revealed, and it winds up not giving any intel at all to Lion or the rest of the attacking team. They have no idea where any of us are. And I've actually played several matches where that winds up happening. We deny Lion any useful intelligence even after he burns off all three of his abilities. Having the defensive team have that three second countdown timer really allows them to take advantage of that. And like I said, not every situation is going to allow you the luxury to do that. There's going to be times where you've got something going on and you've just got to move. And that's why he will pair up well with characters that wind up helping them get flushed out. So he's going to really pair up well with maybe a jackal. Having that same intel where you get the track will give the position away whether they're moving or not. There's other things you can use to actually force the players to move. Tossing in an explosive device is definitely going to get players to move. You know, they're not going to want to explode. So when they run away from that, you will then pick them up. So sometimes it's sort of handy to pair that scan up with something like tossing in some grenades. There's other times where not moving is going to really be a drawback to you and you've got that decision to make do i not move and reveal myself in the scan or do i kind of stay here like a sitting duck maybe you're in a really awkward position when it goes off and you wind up leaving yourself very vulnerable in those situations you may have to wind up moving and forcing yourself to be revealed another way that this is going to have a lot of effective use is when you know you're in a situation where the defenders are forced to move and one of the best examples of when that happens is when the attacking team winds up securing the objective if you get into that room and you're securing it or you grab the hostage you know they're going to try to come to you if you've planted the bomb diffuser they have to come to you they need to take that out they need to take you out wherever they are hiding they can no longer stay put they've got to move out of that position and then that drone scanning them is going to be very very useful it's also useful for helping to ferret out any kind of roamers that might be going on when you're first approaching the building. One of the ways that you can actually use this is as the attacking team begins the breach into the building to hit it and see if you can pick up any of the roamers that might be moving around the map. And that will help initially. Maybe just use that first one if you want to try to ferret out some roamers and then save the other ones for later on in the round. You're going to have times where it makes more sense to use them. Another good time to use it is when the attacking team begins to have their firefights and they push on to the objective. Like I was talking about, up before with the grenades you know you begin to flush people out and they're going to move around so maybe use your next one then and then it's a good idea to save one kind of for the end of the round again when you begin securing that objective maybe you've saved up one or even possibly saved up two of these and that allows you to kind of have that time to go ahead and fire these off so that wraps up this look at Lion, the second attacking member from Operation Chimera. So what do you think about the changes these two new operators bring to the meta? Let me know down in the comments below or share with me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. And if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. Make sure you click that notification icon so you're alerted as soon as I make new content available. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.